Well, good morning, everyone, and good morning to those of you joining us online. I see you joining us this morning. Good to see you uh, worshiping with us. We're glad that you're here. Uh, we are going to begin our worship this morning with a, a moment of silence to help center us before God today, and then we'll all stand together and uh, join our voices in song. If you're joining us online, there's a link in the worship, there for the worship guide, which uh, we'd encourage you to download so that you can have the lyrics there in front of you. We'd also encourage you to share the feed so that friends of yours could see, uh, to see our worship this morning and invite them to church with you today. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us pray together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we'll remain standing for the Gloria.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide we may pass through things temporal when we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. I think I read this one last time. Do you have? Oh, I was like, I remember Laban. (laughs) All right. A reading from the book of Genesis. The same night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his 11 children and crossed the ford of the Jacob. He took them and sent them across the stream and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket and Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, for I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Peniel, limping because of his hip. The word of the Lord. Innocence, O Lord, give heed to my cry. Listen to my prayer, which does not come from lying lips. Let my vindication come forth from your presence. Let your eyes be fixed on justice. Weigh my heart, summon me by night. Melt me down, you will find no impurity in me. I give no offense with my mouth as others do. I have heeded the words of your lips. I call upon. Steps hold fast to the ways of your law. In your paths, my feet shall not stumble. I call upon you, O God, for you will answer me. Incline your ear to me and hear my words. Show me your marvelous loving kindness, O Savior of those who take refuge at your right hand from those who rise up against them. But my my vindication, I shall see your face. When I awake, I shall be satisfied beholding your likeness. I call upon.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Jesus, let me be what you make of me, while you be what I love. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> well, good morning, friends. It's good to be with you today. Uh, now, over the years, I have shared this before, so some of you know this, but if you're newer to Grace, you should probably know, for full disclosure, that I was a Sunday school dropout. Uh, in about the sixth grade, I decided I needed a break. It just wasn't for me, and I knew if I was going to go on in my theological studies that I was going to need a gap year, okay, there in middle school. Uh, I grew up in the church going, going to worship every Sunday with my family, just about every Sunday. I was an acolyte from second grade onward. We were church people, like no doubt about it. But by my middle school years, I was getting a little bit ornery. I was asking a lot of theological questions, trying to figure out what I believed and uh, find if I, figure out if I had a place in the church. And I just I just wasn't sure at that time uh, what that looked like for me. Um, now, what changed for me was going to summer camp my eighth grade year. And there, it was there at St. Crispin's, our Episcopal Church's summer camp here in Oklahoma, that I encountered not just Christ in a new way, but I really embraced Christian community in a new way. It, um, it was there that my faith really came to life. And I don't know if it was the cool counselors with their guitars and their beautiful harmonies, or if it was the awesome priests I met who would wear their stoles along with their flip-flops, uh, or if it was just this community of kids that would melt together in, in worship and fellowship over the course of a week, probably a bit of all three. But at camp, the Holy Spirit was moving. And by the end of the week, uh, you knew that you were a part of something, a community, a community of prayer a community that welcomed and included people. Uh, it drew us together from different backgrounds and schools and cities and churches. And the only thing that mattered, the only thing, was not how much money your family had or what your home life looked like or whether or not you were a cool kid at school. The only thing that mattered is that we were there and that we were gathered together and centered our life uh, uh, through uh, this community of faith in Christ. And that experience of love, of grace, uh, of hospitality, it has stuck with me over the years and really has formed me to be who I am. And what I began to figure out all those years ago is that through the church, through faith and a desire to be close to God and to be in company of people who love Jesus, my life was slowly being woven together with the lives of others, other students, other adults, other counselors, uh, priests and deacons, and not just at camp, but in my home church at well, as well. And to be woven into that, it didn't mean that I had everything figured out about faith, but I, I knew that I wanted to be a part of this. I knew I was connected, that I had a place, and that I belonged. And so by college, I was so wound and woven and bound up into the life of the church uh, that I knew that God wanted to use me for ministry and was calling me uh, to foster community and to, for that to be my vocation. Camp 
literally planted the seed that made me into the priest I am today. And when I hear the gospel reading that uh, Deacon Helen read this morning, the feeding of the 5,000, uh, and when I th- I made me think about that first experience of camp this week, where I experienced Christian community in that way, and it really came alive for me. Because in our passage today, we have Jesus, who, if you remember at the beginning, he's trying to get away from people, actually. <laughs> he's trying to get some peace and quiet, because he's just done all these miracles. He wants some prayer time. And Matthew says, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place, but the crowd followed him. And so we have people so drawn to Jesus, to his message, his healing power, his grace, and his compassion, that they are, they are following him. They are flocking to him from all over, from cities and towns and different places and different backgrounds. And they came together, and they were fed and nourished. They are cared for, and they are united to, in Christ's love. Like strands of thread, their lives begin to be woven together into the fabric of what will become the body of Christ as the church. This reading of the feeding of the 5,000 is the first time in Matthew's gospel where such a huge crowd of people gathers. Word is beginning to spread about Jesus. And this passage shows us the the breadth and the growth that the church will come to see after Jesus' resurrection. Something is compelling people to Jesus now while he's alive, and it will continue to compel them even long after his death. And so as the crowd gathers, it foreshadows, I think, for us, the future of the church. We get a glimpse of also what the disciples' ministry is going to be about. In the passage, Jesus partners with them. He uses them to care for this community that is gathering and forming. After his death, they'll be on his own. So today's reading is kind of like on-the-job training for the disciples. They wonder in our reading if they have enough food, if they have enough resources to do what needs to be done. And Jesus says, bring me what you have. Five loaves, two fish. And that may look like a mustard seed, but it's enough. I can do big things with that, Jesus says. Such a beautiful story, great vision for the church gathered in all its diversity and its beauty and gathered around Jesus. It's a reminder that God has plenty of grace and mercy and compassion to feed all of God's people. And by grace, their lives are bound together, woven together into a fabric of the body of Christ. And this continues today. We also are woven together into the body of Christ. Now remembering and celebrating this reality that we are woven together as one, this is, this is the theme for our August sermon series and our, our, our worship this month. My friends, Christian community, the fellowship of the church is a gift from God. And fostering community and belonging is my greatest passion. It's my calling. And I have to admit to all of you here watching online and here in person that this season of coronavirus has been one of the most frustrating for my ministry, for my, this season of ministry for me. Because uh, so much is out of our control, like everything in our lives, right? And thinking about this, we can't even all gather together right now. Many of us are, are forced to gather online. It's not safe for us to have the big events and things that we did. Just in early March, we had our big, uh, our big Mardi Gras celebration, right? We can't do things like this. We can't do the things that we've become accustomed to doing in this church. I've been rereading this week uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer's book, Life Together. Um, it's a theological and a practical reflection on the nature of Christian community. And Bonhoeffer was living in the 1930s and 40s in uh, Nazi Germany. And so he knew something of what it was like for the life of the church to be dispersed. Now, there were, of course, some Christians in Germany who aligned themselves with, uh, with the Nazi regime. But for those that were a part of the resistance, they were dispersed and in hiding. They were meeting in secret. Many of them were in prison. And they had no streaming services They had no social media, right? So what they did was they wrote letters of encouragement to one another because it's the tool that they had. And Bonhoeffer writes uh, in Life Together about the gift of community, and he says this, Christian brotherhood is not an ideal which we must realize. It is rather a reality created by God in Christ in which we may participate. Christian community, he's saying, isn't just some lofty concept or ideal. 
that we're like striving to create or striving for somehow, it's already a reality. Like God has already done this. It's the reality uh, that when you are baptized into Christ, you are woven into a fellowship. Your relationship to other Christians is therefore transformed because you are now in Christ, as Paul would say. You are now in the love, in the grace, in the compassion of God. You are folded into that, right? Like living in the bread dough. And so when it comes to community, you are folded in with people. You might not even like all these people, really, but you're in community with them, and so you're called to love them because this is the nature of Christ. And there's a beautiful kind of equalizing factor when we think about that theologically because we are forced, uh, or because we, what we believe is that we are all beloved in God's eyes. And this is our identity as the beloved, as one in Christ. And so we are invited to start seeing that belovedness in one another and recognizing that, and participating in it, as Bonhoeffer says. So God creates this reality of community in Christ and invites us to participate. It's our choice. Right? But it doesn't change the reality of being in Christ. But when we do participate in it as a gift, we recognize that gift for ourselves, but also that it's a gift for others that is expressed through our participation. Bonhoeffer goes on to talk about how the nature of Christian community is that it will, in, uh, it will face challenges and trials. He knew a ton about that, living in Nazi Germany. For us, it's coronavirus, which is actually way easier. But how we endure challenges, he says, how we remain connected and love one another through challenges, this is what shows us the true nature of our faith and the true nature of our community. So through this pandemic, while we haven't been able to gather together, I've been so impressed with the many pivots we've made as a church and the many ways I see people caring for one another in this church. Early on in March and April, when we had no idea of what we were going into, right? And, and frankly, like, it's a little bit better than I expected. I, like, I had very cataclysmic thoughts. Perhaps you did too. So we focus on the positives. It's better than it could be. But in that time when we weren't sure what we were entering, we had a phone tree going in this church, checking on all the households that were uh, on record in our database as, as uh, attendees or members. Uh, we delivered these Holy Week bags. Uh, we have chalking of birthday houses through the summer, um, uh, different things to help care for one another. We put together prayer groups and classes online. We began streaming our services. We made all these pivots and changes as a community so that we could um, reach each other and reach out to one another in prayer and fellowship and worship. And, you know, in the business world, they talk about a stress test and how this coronavirus has been a big stress test for lots of businesses. It's also a stress test for lots of churches. And I'm so impressed at the, the strength of the fabric of this body of Christ here at Grace Church as we are woven together in Christ Jesus. And I'm optimistic about where things are headed, friends. I, you know, I don't have cable news, so I don't I don't watch it, <laughs> so I don't like, live in the anxiety that is the 24-hour news cycle. Um, but I do read a lot of scientific studies that are coming out, things that my, my in-laws that are all doctors are sending me and stuff. And I do have confidence that we're going to kick Corona's butt because I believe in science. I believe in the innovation and the intelligence that God gifted us with and that we're going we're gonna to knock this thing. It's good. We're going to make it a manageable disease. Uh, we will all gather together again in worship. There will be shifts in our societal life, yes, but life will get back to normal. It will. But in the meantime, this pandemic will continue to be a trial of our patients, a trial of our community. I'm sure this fall is going to be stressful, especially when I think about uh, parents. You've got kids, many of whom are going to be at home for several months at least, at a minimum. And you'll also be working. That was very stressful. <laughs> we, we know this. We know what to expect. Uh, but this trial, as Bonhoeffer says, is a test of the fabric of our community. And my prayer for all of us and for all of you individually is that this community of faith can be a resource for you of support, of prayer, and of connection in a time of disconnection. We are knit together. And we're here to support one another. And this is a gift from God. It's a reality created by God 
And it's a reality that we may participate in, as Bonhoeffer says. It's a choice. And as we start to pivot now from late summer into the fall, I want to challenge you. I want to invite you. I want to encourage you to find one way this fall to take on as a spiritual practice and as a discipline the gift of community and to participate in it. I want to invite you to participate in the life of Christ and in the authentic relationships that are here and a part of Grace Church. This week we're going to be sending out, later in the week, uh, both a paper mailing. Everybody likes mail now, right? Uh, uh, You know, can't wait for Amazon to come. But we're going to send you a paper mailing, and we're also going to email you a list of some of the the ministries and groups and things that we're going to have going on this fall, especially online. A lot will be online. Um, And I'd love for you to take a look at that and to pray about how God wants you to connect this fall, how to connect to God, to your faith, but also to community. And I know this fall is going to be busy. It's going to be stressful. It's going to be uncertain. You might not feel like you have time for anything. This is why one of the options that we're going to present to you is a new form of small groups that we're starting. They're going to be kind of like mini groups because it's only six weeks. For six weeks, you would meet for one hour over Zoom to pray Compline out of the Book of Common Prayer, the night prayers out of the, out of the Book of Common Prayer together. You're like, I don't know how to pray. I don't know how to have the words. We have a script. It's the beauty of the Anglican tradition. We have the script for you. And we're going, to get, we're going to pray these Compline prayers together. We're going to check in with one another. We're going to share prayer concerns. We're going to lift up each other in prayer. It's six weeks, and then you're done. And you can sign up for another six-week group or not. Maybe that's all you can give for the fall, but it's a way for you to connect. And I think that if we will make time for those six hours over six weeks, though it may not seem like much, Jesus could make something beautiful happen from that. We give that to Jesus like the disciples gave their bread and their fish, and I believe we will be filled. I bet if just half of the adults in our church participated in one of these, that, that we would see a new level of connection and prayer, and support within our church community that would move through us and move us through this ordeal to the next level of being Grace Church because we live into authentic relationships, sacramental lives, and generous hearts. You participating in this fellowship and in this prayer, I believe will bring you spiritual and emotional support and benefit amidst the weariness and the anxieties of our day, but I also think Hear this, I also think that you could be an encouragement, an encourager of others in our community. You could support them. And that is just as important a part of being church. So if you're watching online, you have a step ahead of the folks here because you could go online, graceyukon.org slash small groups right now and read about this. But friends, we are woven together in Christ Jesus. We've been given the gift of community. And in this time when disconnection is so easy, it's important, more important than ever to be a part of something, to be a a support and an encouragement to one another, to ask for help and to ask for prayer when we need it. And this is what it means to be the body of Christ. Woven together by faith, by grace, by fellowship, God gives us the strength, gives us the sustenance, gives us our daily bread. Consider community, friends, as a gift and as a spiritual practice and pray about how God might want you to respond. Amen. I'd invite you to stand wherever you are and as we uh, do every week, we confess our faith in God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so today I invite you to join with us in those words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. During our prayers, the people would invite you, especially if you're online, to type your prayer requests in so that we can lift those up with you. With all our hearts and with all our minds, let us turn to the Lord singing. of life and beauty. We give you thanks for the gifts you have given us, especially the gift of community. In this season when it is so easy to disconnect and to be overcome by the anxieties of life, remind us that we are upheld by your love and woven together into the fabric of the body of Christ. Clothe us with your grace and love. Help our church be a source of strength, support, encouragement and prayer for one another guide our bishop and clergy inspire our laity that each of us may respond to the call to be in your hands and feet in the world hear especially the prayers and concerns of this community especially kelly debbie the plogue family kent taylor's family marnie's family marianne angie Bree's family Jennifer, Vicki and family, Joseph, Diane, Taryn, Gail, Sherry, Becky, the Thompson family, Kobe, Susie, Kaylee, Krista, Eli, Don, for all affected by the COVID virus, for Barb, Carolyn, Barbara, Lucille, Clay, Sarah, Alice, Kenny, Virginia, Jackie, Betty and Jerry. Remember also our loved ones who have died and grant them a place in your eternal kingdom. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Gracious Lord, we remember today all the leaders in our communities who are having to make hard decisions to keep us healthy. We pray especially for our president, our Congress, and Supreme Court, for local governors and mayors, for school administrators, and for business leaders. Help us to work together for the common good and see that our lives and well-being are tied together. We are in life together. Look graciously, Lord Jesus, upon those suffering from heartache or health trouble, upon those looking for work for the lonely, the depressed, the homeless. Hear the cries of those feeling the weight of life's burdens. Watch over the whole human family around the world. Help us to care for one another and bear one another's burdens. Christ Jesus, you gathered the multitudes on the hillside and fed your people. You showed us that you have plenty of love and grace and healing for all your children. You knit us together in your love. May our common humanity, may our need for you and our redeemed life in you, hold us together as your people woven into one. Hear our prayer, O Lord.
Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have, have mercy, mercy on us and, and forgive us, us that we may delight in your will, will and walk, walk in your ways to the glory of your name. name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you and forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in everlasting life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And greet one another in the name of Christ. Please be seated. Well, friends, uh, for our announcements today, I do have a couple. I've got a couple of announcements, actually, um, and, and one kind of big extra one. Um, so just so you know, the, the kind of normal announcements are this. Uh, uh, VBS, our family at home VBS is continuing. Tonight we've got a session at 6.30 and then Tuesday and Thursday, and so that has been a really great experience. Um, I think brought kind of families together. I know I enjoyed doing that with my kids, um, as Kirsten and Grace love that from here at the church. Um, our patio gatherings continue. We're, we're going to shift this month to doing them on the first and third Sundays of the month. Uh, just as people's kind of schedules get a little busier and stuff into the fall, um, we're going to do it twice a month here on the patio. It's a social distant outdoor gathering, So, um, but a time that you could come and see people in the flesh and face to face. And so I uh, invite you to consider that. Um, and then lastly, Mana Pantry is this Saturday. Uh, and then I hope uh, people saw in the e-news last week, and we have a Facebook event also, that our, uh, our Back to School Sunday, which is August 16th, we're keeping it that day. Schools are moving their calendars all around. But uh, we're gonna, on August 16th, we're going to keep that as our Back to School Sunday. And instead of doing a big Sunday morning thing like we normally do, we're going to do an outdoor, it's a short service at 6.30, uh, for students and teachers primarily, um, and uh, so we'd invite you families to come. We'll spread out in the parking lot. We'll sing a couple songs. Um, we'll have a, a brief a brief message, and then the blessing of the backpacks or laptops or iPads or whatever whatever devices uh, people might be using this fall. Um, and so that's going to be a great time. I hope to kind of gather our community again outdoors and in a, in a safe way as possible. Um, and uh, uh, one of our members, Ben Whaley, started a snow cone stand this uh, spring, and so the Ice House is going to be here uh, with their snow cones, and so that should be make that a little bit even more fun event. So um, I kind of hold that up for you, uh, parents, kind of maintain helping our kids to maintain social distance and being safe and things like that is um, is very important. But we look forward to being able to gather in that way. Um, and then lastly, my big announcement um, today is that. Uh, it, you might remember that earlier this year, uh, we did a campaign study. We presented an initial draft of a, a building plan for Grace Church as we've been working on our five-year plan. Um, in March, on March 8th, like, which I think was the last Sunday that before coronavirus, <laughs> um, we announced our, our capital campaign leadership team. And then we kind of have had to pause a lot of things over the last four months and extend out our our, our five-year plan. Uh, but through a lot of prayer and discernment among leadership in the church and consulting with our diocese, we've decided uh, that this fall we're going to continue on. We still have a longer-term vision beyond coronavirus of the ministry and the life that we want to see happen here at Grace Church. And so we have decided that we're going to continue on with our Growing in Grace campaign. So we've got a nice little slide of our campaign logo. Can we put that up? Perfect. So we have decided to continue on with our Growing in Grace campaign, just with faith that uh, coronavirus is going to be tamed, and long after that, we are still going to need an, uh, the facility and the support spaces for our ministry to continue to thrive. Um, uh, classrooms, parking, uh, a building really designed for our ministry needs. Um, 
in more better integrated technology so we can continue to stream and things like that. So I want to reintroduce to you um, our, our campaign leadership team. We obviously can't have them all here, uh, but our chairs are Ron and Sarah Hayes, um, Kay Casper, who's here this morning, uh, Jaron Hill, uh, Whitney Ellison, Eric and Stacy Chase, Sue Walters, Brad Redden and Rodney Ickard, uh, Heather Bear, Teresa Williams, Marty Jones, Ryan and Jessica Parker, Emily and Matt Matthews, John Hunter, Ben Whaley, uh, Ross and Aubrey Williamson, and Sean Houck, all kind of supported with our Grace Church staff here. Um, over the next few months, we are going to be gathering and presenting to you the plans and the message of the campaign, um, and we're going to be bringing that to every household in the congregation. So we look forward to sharing the, the design, which has changed a lot since uh, February when we shared the initial concept with the congregation, um, but we've completed that design over the summer, and we're really excited about it. Uh, and uh, I would ask for you to pray for our campaign in these months ahead um, and uh, for how God's calling you to respond and engage with that as well. Um, so let us say a prayer for this team. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for these leaders in our church um, who are helping us continue to think long term. Uh, and uh, thank you for all the ways that you have nudged our congregation forward uh, and bound us together in this time of this virus. Um, and help us continue to look past uh, the immediate uh, so that we can see the path that you've laid in front of us and the direction that you want to continue to see us move in. Help us to continue to grow in your grace uh, through this Growing in Grace campaign uh, so that we can continue to uh, help people find an inclusive place of authentic relationships, sacramental lives, and generous hearts. Center us on our values as a church and help us to continue to grow into being the church that you call us to be. Uh, guide us uh, and help us in our discernment uh, and in our next steps ahead in these months to come. And we ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, now, friends, as we have our offertory song, uh, we invite you to consider making a gift to support the, the operations and the ministries of Grace Church. You can do so online at graceyukon.org slash giving. And for those of us here in the room, of course, there's a, a basket here, and we want to remind you to use hand sanitizer on your way up for communion. So now let us ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts.
please stand. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took a cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Take and drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. And therefore, we proclaim the mystery of our faith, that Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and that the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Be known to us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the bread. Be known to us, Lord Jesus, in the
Friends, this is the table of Jesus, and it is made ready for those who love him and those who want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have not been here long, you who have tried to follow and you who have failed, come, because it is Jesus who invites us, and it is his wish that the it is his desire that those who wish would meet him here. Please be seated, uh, and your rose will be ushered forward to receive. And for those of you uh, following along uh, online today uh, who are not able to be here in person, we have a special prayer in your worship guide, and they'll put it up on the screen for you, uh, that uh, unites us in our desire to receive Christ and the grace uh, of God that's made known in the sacrament in a spiritual way uh, in this time that we can't all be together. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at this altar, we offer you praise and thanksgiving for all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, and for the means of grace and the hope of glory. We pray together. We believe that you are truly present in the holy sacrament. And since we cannot at this time receive communion, we pray you to come into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you and embrace you with all our heart, soul, and mind. Let nothing separate us from you. Let us serve you in this life until by your grace we come to your glorious kingdom in unending peace. Amen.
Me? And let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you forever. Amen. Now let us go out into the world to love and serve our God and neighbor. Thanks be to God. We hope you have a beautiful Sunday and look forward to seeing you next week.